In this video, we'll learn how you can get free mockups to use in Affinity Photo. But in case you don't know how great mockups are, here's a few examples of designs I made by using mockups. Each one of these only took me a few minutes to make because the mockups did 90% of the work for me. Mockups give the starting place for a design, and then you just need to add your own text and photos. But before I show you where to get free mockups, I need to make a small disclaimer. The mockups we'll be using are actually Photoshop files. In a perfect world, there would be a large collection of mockups designed specifically for Affinity Photo. But since the Affinity community is still young, we'll just have to work with Photoshop files for now. Fortunately, Affinity Photo can easily import Photoshop files. First though, we need to turn on two settings from inside the Preferences menu. As a side note for PC users, you'll find the Preferences menu under the Edit menu. Inside the Preferences menu, come to the General category. From here, turn on Import PSD Text as Text and Import PSD Smart Objects. Having these settings turned on gives Affinity the best possible chance of successfully importing a Photoshop file. It's important to note though, the setting says import PSD smart objects where possible. If the Photoshop file is using a filter that Affinity doesn't have, then Affinity won't be able to import it. All right, now that we have our settings all ready to go, Let's get some free mockups. There are many sites that offer free Photoshop mockups, but my personal favorite is graphberry.com. All of the mockups on this site are 100% free, and most of them work great in Affinity. But as I mentioned before, not every Photoshop filter can import into Affinity Photo. For example, Affinity can't import Photoshop files where the document is being curved like this one. But if you're ever unsure whether a mockup will import into Affinity, just download it and see if it works. The mockups are free, so you have nothing to lose. For this tutorial, I'm going to download the Samsung S20 mockup. After downloading a template from GraphBerry, all you need to do is open the PSD file in Affinity Photo. Affinity did a great job importing this mockup, but I want to show you a few things you might run into to help you make the most of these mockups. First, I want to point out the red layer. If you've never used colored layers before, this might look a little concerning, but it's actually totally fine. Whenever you want, you can right click on a layer and give it a color label. The creator of this mockup gave this layer a red color, but you can change its color if you want or give it no color. The creator of this mockup says we can delete this layer, but I actually like having the Samsung name inside the document. However, I don't like these file type names underneath it. So instead of deleting the entire layer, I'm just going to press E for the eraser and then erase the file names. You could also use a black mask if you want to work non-destructively. Next, let's learn how to place your own photo into the Samsung screen. As you can see, there's a group called front side. Inside the group, there's a layer called Screen, and it's labeled as an Embedded Document. An Embedded Document is a separate Affinity file that lives inside the Affinity file that's currently open. If that doesn't make sense, you'll see what I mean in a second. Just know that Embedded Documents are where you'll place your own photo when using a mockup. To open the embedded document, we just need to double-click on its layer icon. 
Now we're taken to a new Affinity Photo file, the file that's been embedded into the other one. This embedded file comes with a blank layer already added to it, but we don't need this layer, so you can delete it if you want. Now we can use the Place option from the File menu to place our own photo into the document. Then you can resize and position it as desired. Now if we come back to our main document, you can see that our photo has been automatically added to the Samsung screen. At this point, you can close out of the embedded document. And if you ever want to adjust the embedded photo's size or position, just double click on its layer icon to open it back up. If you look closely though, we have a small problem with our mock-up. The photo we added isn't being masked to where the Samsung screen should be. You'll find that Affinity doesn't always do a perfect job at importing Photoshop files, and in situations like this, you might need to tweak the file a little bit. Fortunately, this problem is pretty easy to fix. Inside our Layers panel, you can see that we have a screen layer that we've been working with, and right underneath it is a layer called Mask. Using our deduction skills, we can conclude that the Mask layer is supposed to be a mask for the screen layer. To fix this, all we need to do is make the screen a child layer to the mask, which you can do by dragging it down and to the right. Perfect! Now the screen layer is being masked to where the Samsung screen should be. Now, if we zoom back out, we can see our finished work. Mockups make designs like this extremely easy. And as a final tip for you, remember that you can turn files like this into a template, giving you easy access to the mockup whenever you want to use it. If you want to learn more about templates, I'll leave two links in the video description, one for our introductory tutorial to templates, and another link for our in-depth tutorial on creating your own templates. Well, thanks for watching my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.